The International Religious Freedom Report is an annual report released by the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom since 1998. The USCIRF is funded by the U.S. government. The commission makes policy recommendations to the U.S. President, the Secretary of State, and Congress. It will list the countries that violate human rights under country of particular concern every year. Sanctions will be imposed on the listed countries in the name of human rights violation. However, it's apparent that which country will be listed or whether the sanctions will be applied depends on how a country gets along with the U.S. Now, 14 countries, including China, Pakistan, and Russia, were put on a special watch list for severe violations. Most of the listed countries have frictions with the U.S. India was listed on the report in 2021 to be sanctioned. However, the proposal was not accepted by the Biden administration. Obviously, India and the U.S. are intimate allies. The report also claimed that China has been persecuting Christians. However, in China, the Christian population has skyrocketed from a mere 500,000 to 130 million believers in just 70 years. Usurping the name of International Religious Freedom Police, the U.S. uses it to interfere in other countries' internal affairs. These evidences show that the U.S. has been incubating ISIS by providing weapons, intelligence support, and funding them in the shadow. Former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's leaked emails revealed that the U.S. has sold weapons to ISIS, and it was confirmed by the founder of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange. In light of the BBC investigation, 250 ISIS fighters and 3,500 of their families escaped from Raqqa under the gaze of the U.S. and Kurdish-led forces who control the city. Several countries' leaders denounced the U.S. backing of ISIS. Another extremist group, the East Turkestan Islamic Movement, received the U.S. support when it was established. In 1952, the U.S. provided 200,000 rupees to Pan Turks, helping them escape to Turkey. Since 2004, U.S.-based NGO National Endowment for Democracy funded East Turkestan organizations, including World Uyghur Congress, with over eight million dollars. Australian Strategic Policy Institute released eight special reports on how Western countries interfere in Xinjiang and support secessionism because of geopolitics. The U.S. even ran a social media account. For East Turkestan Islamic Movement, the U.S. imposes sanctions on Chechen leader over human rights violations in 2017, whereas the U.S. secretly provided shelter for Elias Ahmedyev, head of Chechen terrorists, and openly met with him. Putin blasted the U.S. on its terror stance. He criticized the U.S. tendency to view anti-Russian fighters in Chechen. As freedom fighters rather than terrorists. I want to thank the Universal Peace Federation, and in particular, Dr. Hawk Jahan Moon, a tremendous person for her incredible work on behalf of peace. This video clip was aired on the 20th anniversary of the 9/11 terror attacks, when other leaders were given condolences to the victims. Former U.S. President Donald Trump was praising the Unification Church, widely known as a cult. It is not the first time the U.S. GOP has appeared in its propaganda campaign. The Republicans, with their right-wing beliefs, have been aligned with the Unification Church's movement for a long time. The Unification Church is a notorious hierarchical sinister empire. And its founder Sun Myung Moon, a self-proclaimed Masai, was accused by the international society of exploiting vulnerable youngsters, brainwashing followers, and fleecing them of cash. The Unification Church once held a mass wedding ceremony for 325,000 Moonies, 
some of whom had just met days earlier. <laughs> And while Moon was befriending the GOP, he was also building a billion-dollar business empire that included newspapers, TV stations, and an arms factory. Now the chaotic situation of South Korea that has so many courts has inevitable relations with the U.S. In 1954, a religious radio station, Christian Broadcasting System, was established. And funded by the CIA, spreading anti-government views and politics. In 20 years, U.S. presidents have met with the Dalai Lama for about 14 times. Since the Tibetan Policy Act of 2002 was approved, the U.S. support for the so-called government in exile never stopped. The Tibet Policy and Support Act 2020 moved through Congress as an amendment to this year's 1.4 trillion dollar government spending bill. In the name of democracy, the religious freedom has become one of the weapons of the U.S., who self-proclaimed as international police to interfere in other countries' internal affairs.